All right, so we're switching gears to organic chemistry. And, uh, you know, like I said before, a lot of students either love organic chemistry or hate it. And it's very different than the first two units we've been working on. Um, so just keep that in mind. Be prepared. It is not at all similar. Um, you won't need a calculator. You won't need a periodic table. Yeah, if you're a visual learner, this really appeals to you. Now, there are flashcards for this unit. They're blue flashcards, so be sure to memorize your blue flashcards. Um, and I think I have it on the schedule, but just you know, make sure you do that. All right, so organic chemistry. You know, you hear everything organic. Organic foods are better, this, that. So when referring to organic foods, they're talking about foods that are grown without chemicals, right? So they don't have the pesticides. Organic chemistry is the study of carbon-containing compounds. It's not the study of organic food. But there's some overlap there, but... Because food has carbon in it. So. How many bonds does carbon have? So carbon's in group four. It has four valence electrons. <coughs> it likes to share. Uh, so it always contains four bonds. So carbon is four bonds. So there's a joke, you know, you can, as long as you can count to four in organic chemistry, you can, or as long as you can count to four, you can do organic chemistry. It's a little trickier than that. It's not as simple. But, you know, you will find yourself saying, how many bonds do I have to this carbon? One, two, three, four. Okay, that's good. If you have three, you have two few. If you have five, that's too many. Six, seven, eight. You're doing crazy chemistry. So, since organic chemistry is the study of carbon-containing compounds, organic molecules have, if they contain carbon, what kind of bonds do they have? Covalent. They like to share for group four. Organic molecules contain polar covalent bonds when carbon bonds to something to the right of it. I'll give you an example. So we just went over polar covalent in unit two. So if I have a carbon-oxygen linkage like this, I'm just going to put lines to simplify it. So there's, you know carbon has four bonds, but I'm not going <coughs> to put any other atoms to complicate it. Um, this bond, carbon-oxygen bond, is going to be polar covalent. That's what I'm talking about. So this bond is going to be polar covalent. Organic molecules often contain, in addition to carbon, they have hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. And we'll learn more about what functional groups they make in Unit 4. So a hydrocarbon, this is something we'll often come across in organic chemistry, this, is a, this <laughs> contains only the elements Hydrogen and carbon. Okay. 
a lot of times students think hydro means water, you know, so they think hydrocarbon, water carbon, but it's just hydrogen and carbon. So if you look at O oh, this is ethane. Ethane is an example of a hydrocarbon. Showing you this example of a hydrocarbon makes me uh, think of the roots in organic chemistry, counting roots. I'm going to show you those real quick. And these aren't on your blue flashcards, but they're helpful to know. They'll get you a long way in organic chemistry. So <coughs> meth is one. And when I say one, I'm talking about the number of carbons. So if just wherever you have extra space, maybe at the bottom of your next page. Uh, and I'll do it on the bottom of the next page, too. So. Okay, so the bottom of this table. So the root and then the number of carbons. So... Meth, one carbon. F, as in ethane, that we just did was two carbons. Meth, F, prop, is three carbons. Bute, Although it looks like but. Butte is four. Pent is five. Hex is six. Hept is seven. Oct is eight. Non is nine, and then deck is ten. So when you hear, you know, you go to the gas station and you fill up your car with gas, you see that each gasoline has an octane rating. So how many carbons are we talking about there? Eight. So these roots will take you a long way. You know, so if for whatever reason the rest of organic chemistry you don't get and you had to come in and take an exam or a quiz and you say, oh yeah, I think I might have three carbons or four carbons based on these roots. So, you know, if you're a flashcard person, make those flashcards if you'd like to write things out. That's good that really you only have to learn the first four because it's the same as the good thing you have to memorize. Right, exactly. There is overlap. So and that's the one nice thing about chemistry. It is a cumulative subject. So the longer we go forward, the more we're kind of reviewing units one and two and three. So even though, oh, wait, I do know that. So you'll see that again and again. Um, so hopefully when you get to the final, which seems like way in advance, but it's going to sneak up on us, you'll be better prepared because you're, you know, you're always studying. So um, let's go over the differences between organic and inorganic substances. Um, the main thing about organic substances, they contain carbon, right? Inorganic substances, thank you, do not, I should know, uh, do not contain carbon. What type of bonding did we already talk about in organic? Yeah, polar covalent or just covalent, you know, it could be polar covalent depending on what you have going on, but covalent. And inorganic, and it's confusing because you think inorganic. I, when I first was learning chemistry, inorganic, what does that mean? Is it, it's not organic. Uh, 
the bonding is ionic. Um, organic compounds have a low melting point. Inorganic compounds have a high melting point. Um, you know, I'll give you an organic compound, ethane. Very low melting point. Um, probably like negative Celsius. <coughs> Whereas an inorganic compound would be like NaCl, that has a very high melting point. You know, sometimes um, throwing salt on a fire you know, goes out. So. Um, okay, organic compounds burn in air. They are very flammable, right? We don't want to have you fill up your gas tank and then have open flame because it'll definitely catch on fire. Inorganic compounds do not burn. I'll do a demonstration for you in lab where I take uh, ether, no, it, it may be ether, um, or Hexane, it, it's an organic compound, and I just put a little bit of it in a uh, evaporating dish, throw a match in there, and it catches on fire very quickly. Now, salt, I'll do the same thing with sodium chloride, put, and it just it does not burn at all. In fact, it goes out. So, uh, inorganic compounds do not burn, while organic compounds burn very readily. Um, Soluble, okay, that's what I said. Soluble. So, soluble in organic solvents. So, when I say soluble, I mean it dissolves in. So, an organic compound will dissolve in other organic solvents. So, this, this is called nonpolar. Inorganic compounds like salt are soluble in, I'm going to put polar solvents. This would be like water. So sodium chloride will readily dissolve in water. Uh, if you tried to put it in, say, hexane or octane or gasoline, it would not dissolve. So it has to be a polar solvent. Um, and that has to do with the like dissolves like. In organic compounds, when I say polar, you might be thinking of the polar co covalent, but we're talking about solubility. When we get into this more in Unit 5, Organic is more nonpolar. So I'll say down here like dissolves like. That takes you a long way. Like dissolves like. Nonpolar dissolves nonpolar, meaning. Nonpolar is soluble in nonpolar, so organic is soluble in organic. Inorganic is not going to be soluble in organic. So it's you you use this all the time. You probably just don't realize it. Um, so that's why, like, you put salt and water to boil water, mm -hmm. and it's going to eventually dissolve. Mm -hmm. and right. Put it directly. Right, and we have those liquid bio layers too that kind of have dual permeability. You know, so you have some organic and you have some inorganic bipolar. So uh, it's a good point you bring up. Uh, 
you know, if you think about household applications of this life dissolves life, if you ever have an annoying thing, if you pull off a sticker on, you know, maybe it's you buy a new plastic container, trying to get the sticker off, and it just will not come off. You got a little bit of it off, but the rest of it stays stuck on. Oh, it's so annoying. Um, it's made up of organic compounds. So if you do something like, if you try to use water or soap, it's really not going to work that well. And then you start scratching it. It's not going to take it off very well. It's going to destroy it. But if you use something like a little bit of vegetable oil, that will take it off. You know, like little tricks like that. You know, if you think about, what is this more like? Is it more nonpolar? Is it more organic? Or is it more water soluble? So uh, little tricks like that that you, you use, you're talking about like dissolves like. Um, the last point of comparison is that organic compounds are considered non-electrolytes and when I say non-electrolyte that's no ions formed. Now you might think about, especially for those of you in the health field, you get these IVAs, they have electrolytes in them and different ions, but organic compounds do not form ions, so they are considered a non-electrolyte. Inorganic compounds, on the other hand, they're ionic compounds, so they are going to form electrolytes, so they are called electrolytes. Electrolyte forms ions. These terms, electrolyte and non-electrolyte, we'll see in Unit 5. But, you know, hearing it once or twice before, you're more familiar with it. It's not as foreign when you learn it in Unit 5. All right. So moving on to... Page three. By the way, I think organic chemistry gets a very bad reputation when you hear about it and it's, oh, it's the most impossible thing. Organic chemistry is my favorite, favorite, favorite thing. Uh, you know, it's, it's really cool. I hope you find it to be that way, too. So it's, it's not unfun. Uh, okay, we're going to talk about the functional group. That's the reactive portion of a molecule. And remember we use the term molecule when we're dealing with covalent bonds, which is what we're going to be seeing in organic chemistry. So this is covalent bonds. All right, so the functional group, there are families in organic chemistry. There's the alkane family, there's the alkene family, there's the alkyne family, and then there's the aromatic family. Uh, where this really helps the families, it's the ending. It's a lot like your last name. You now, if you have a last name, Clark, I remember a member of the Clark family. Um, other, you might know other Clarks, you might be related to other Clarks, that type of thing. The same thing applies in organic chemistry. So, with the alkane family, What the alkanes are known for is a carbon-carbon single bond. So this bond right here is a single bond. But I want to give you an example of an alkane so that you can kind of put together those roots that I gave you and then these endings. You can go very far in organic chemistry with just this information. So if I said 
propane. You guys know a lot about this already. What can you tell me? How many carbons does it have? Three carbons. What type of bonds? Single. So it's three carbons held together by a single bond. That's it. So, you know, you could start drawing a structure of propane. Now, the way I drew the structure is very simple. You will notice that my carbons don't have four bonds. This is just the bare bones structure. And we'll talk about this a little bit later. This is called a skeletal structure. A skeletal structure is just very simple. You can see you don't get distracted by other atoms in it. So I'm just going to keep these simple for now. Um, but a little later on, we'll start putting in hydrogens and making the four bonds. Now an alkene, this has the bond between these two carbons is a double bond. That's what's unique about the alkene family. So that is a double bond. Give you an example, ethene. What can you tell me about ethene based on what you've learned so far? Two carbons and a double bond. So your skeletal structure for ethene would just look like this. So now you probably are going to be able to read the labels on all these crazy, crazy chemicals that they have in some of your food. Hopefully, you try not to eat too many of them, but um, you know you can pick out these different, different chemicals, organic chemicals. So, alkyne, that family, has a triple bond. Exactly. So Jerry asked a good question. Why do I just have one line here? Uh, you know, these lines show that carbon is bonded to something else. It could be a hydrogen. It could be another carbon. But when you have a triple bond and you're counting up how many bonds you have around carbon, you're looking at, you're counting these as one, two, three, four. So then one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if you go up to the, the alkene family, you have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then the alkanes, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So it's kind of random, but like, mm -hmm. so the more bonds you're getting, I'm assuming, like what we just talked about, mm -hmm. that maybe that kind of pro reaction, like mm -hmm. you would have to have more hydrogens and more of these like, weak bonds to change it into something. Depends. Some some multiple bonds are easier to get rid of. Um, <coughs> straight chain, that may be true. Uh, but if you had a ring that popped open really easily, it might not be that hard to get rid of. Good question. Okay, let's give you, let's do, I might, I'm going to. Give you a little bit more detail, but if necessary with this alkyne that I'm giving you. Two few time. So we have really we really haven't talked about nomenclature that much. Sorry, this is crooked. But you can tell me a lot about this molecule already. <coughs> How many carbons in it? Four. So YNE tells you that it's in triple bond. 
Now you might think, what the heck is this number? She didn't say anything about numbers. The number tells where the triple bond is. So if I have, how many is butte? Four. So you number your carbons, and we'll get, this is, I'm just giving you a preview so that when we get to this in nomenclature that you don't say, what? Just a little preview. So what this two is telling you is that the triple bond, triple bond is between carbons two, and three. So I'm just going to add my triple bond there. So you can get a long way with what you already know, the family names and then the groups. So, you know, we just didn't study for the rest of the, the unit. You know, get pretty far with that, but um, it's also helpful to kind of have a preview so that when you get to nomenclature, it's not just like, oh my god, this is the worst thing ever. It's not that bad. It's simple, but you just break it down into pieces. Okay, the last family is the aromatic family. And the aromatic family, what you have is a six-membered ring. So that's a hexagon. So hexagon. And an aromatic compound, the bonds alternate between single and double. Single, double. So aromatic structures can be drawn several ways. These bonds are always spinning around. And I will talk more about organic or not organic or talk more about aromatic later on. But the one thing about aromatics is those those double bonds are always moving around that circle. So you could just as well draw a structure like this. Right? Where the double bonds have shifted one over. They've gone to the next carbon, set of carbons over. But you still have the alternating single and double bond. We also, in this course, except if you don't want to try and do the alternating single and double bond, you can put a hexagon with a circle in the center of it, and that means the same thing. You have to have that circle, or else that means a different compound. And we'll, we'll talk about that, too. So will there ever be, like, the, like the two and three? Will there ever be something like that to tell us where to go off on one of those? Or? Yes, there will be numbers. So, let's see. Try nitro toluene, TNT, right? We hear about TNT silent. Uh, TNT... This is an, and you, I wouldn't expect you to know this from what we've talked about, but uh, TNT is two, four, six, tri nitro toluene. So, you might think, well, where did she get toluene? That has that E-N-E -E ending, and I would think that it's an alkene. This is on your blue flashcards. So, um, toluene, this will be one of the ones that you need to memorize for sure. Toluene looks like this. It has a CH3 coming off of it, and it's an aromatic compound. Now you, oh, we'll just put this circle. If you don't put that circle, it's not TNT. It 
has to be have the circle or the alternating single and double bonds. So nitro. This is another group that's on your blue flashcard. So you'll you'll learn this, and then you have NO2 here, NO2 here, NO2 here. And the numbering, like you're asking about Jerry, this is carbon one, this is carbon two, this is carbon three, four, five, six. So this would tell us, does it always go one, two, or can it shift? It can shift around, depending, and, and we'll get into this, the nitty gritty, you know, depending on whether you're dealing with benzene or polyene, whatever it is. But, um, but you can see how TNT, why it gets that abbreviation, because you have tri nitro toluene. So tri nitro toluene, TNT, this is an example of an aromatic compound. The aromatic compounds aren't as easy to label, you know, but say that family. If you see the structure, for sure you can say that belongs to the aromatic family. But if you're just given the name, you might not necessarily pick up on it. So at this point, a little bit later on, you will know. Um, they do have a tendency to be not a good smelling compound, but they have a tendency to be very volatile. So, you know, they you know, they go from the liquid to the gas phase very quickly. And, you know, aromatics, it used to be benzene. Benzene is just this, the name of this one, where it doesn't have anything. You probably, maybe you've heard of benzene. You know, it does come up in the news, but it is a major carcinogen. And it used to be in the good old days of, of organic chemistry, you know, like my advisor, oh, we never used gloves, we never worked in fume hoods, I drink it. You know. Oh, but, God. <laughs> 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 Well, there is a, a, like this old German chemis chemical book called Feilstein. And uh, way, a long time ago, they used to, to put the taste of chemicals. So it, it's not that crazy that they would. Who's bitter? Who's sour? Uh, you know, I, don't want to I know, yeah. <laughs> no, no. But benzene is, mm, that is nasty. A lot of people who worked with benzene before the, the carcinogenic factor was known, they, they ended up getting lung cancer because it is so volatile when you take it in. So, you know, before working with hoods and, and all that. And, and a lot of solvents that were used, you know, 50 years ago are not used anymore because they're just so nasty. So. Um, okay, so we learned about alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, aromatics. Um, we learned a, bit, a little bit more about nomenclature, which we're going to see a lot of nomenclature in organic chemistry. And... I think I am going to skip 4 and 5 and come back to 4 and 5. Um, I find that it works better if you know how to name things. Before. So remember an alkane? What is an alkane? Yes, so it is a hydrocarbon, hydrocarbon with only single bonds. In organic chemistry, names and structures are very important. So uh, we kind of talked about names. We're going to learn a lot more about names now. Uh, but the structural formula, you know, we learned about names in Unit 2, but we didn't really 
draw them out, you're going to be drawing them out in organic chemistry. Um, so there are a few ways to show this. Um, there's a complete structural formula. In a complete structural formula, all bonds are shown. So, ethane, for instance. Ethane is two carbons. What type of bonds? Single. Okay, so this is, I don't know if it's ethane underneath. Ethane. Now we all know carbon has how many bonds? Four. Right now, I only have one bond shown to each carbon. So in order to make it correct, I need to put those other bond, or other bonds in, what they're bonded to. <coughs> With ethane, it's just a hydrocarbon. It's made up of hydrogen and carbon. So you're going to fill that four with hydrogen. So hydrogen here, hydrogen here, hydrogen here, sorry. But. And you're going to do the same thing to the other carbon. That is the complete structural formula for ethane. Complete structural formulas take up a lot of space because you're drawing every single atom that's coming off that carbon. Condensed structural formulas, on the other hand, carbon-carbon bonds are shown, but the carbon-hydrogen bonds are condensed. CH So you just kind of squish that down. So when you're looking at ethane and you're looking at it making it into a condensed structural formula, all these bonds are going to be squashed down. So in that first carbon, how many hydrogens do you have coming off? Three. So it looks like that. And then the second one is going to be CH3. <coughs> it was not. You will see that sometimes. And that's to clarify. This structure I would accept. I have no problem accepting. Um, but it might be misleading because it's saying, oh, this carbon is connected to three hydrogens. That's not actually how it is. You know from your complete structural formula that this carbon is actually connected to this carbon. So sometimes, in order to clarify that, you might put your, flip your H's to the other side. Because then you're kind of like reading it from left to right that way. Right. Right. So either one I'm comfortable with. I accept either one. Uh, if there's one way that makes it clear for you, by all means, use that. Sometimes when you look at structures in your book, uh, you might see, well, why is it flipped around? Is that not the same thing? It's to show, to clarify that this is carbon, being bonded to a carbon. Okay. Now, straight chain alkanes. You can fill this table out now by yourself, right? You know the roots, 1 through 10. So <coughs> straight chain alkane with one carbon would be called methane. Good. So the condensed structural formula of methane is just going to be C and how many hydrogens? Four, because you only have one carbon. 
So the condensed structural formula looks like that. If you're wondering how did she come up with four, I'll draw the complete structural formula just for methane over here. It's carbon, four bonds around it, hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. Now, notice I have straight chain alkanes. These are all in a straight line, left to right. So this we have decane is 10 carbon, left to right. Um, so I point out straight chain because we'll get to some branch chain alkanes coming up. All right, so let's go through and do the rest. Methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, decane. So now, doing the condensed structural formulas, I find it helpful when you're first starting out with organic chemistry, and I still do this myself. It, if you try to fill in the hydrogens right away, you will put too many bonds on carbon, if that makes sense. So if you start with the skeleton, where you just have like that, and then fill in your hydrogens. So you, you know you need one, one, two, three, one, one, two, three. And then propane, one, two, three. So how many does this end carbon need? Three, good. And this other end needs three as well. And then we have two, two bonds here, so the center one needs two. That's huge. A lot of students get into the habit of just CH3, CH3, CH3. That alarm will go off, right? Ring, ring, ring. That's why bonds to carbon can happen. So, okay. All right. Butane, four carbons, three hydrogens on the end, two hydrogens in the center, and the two center carbons. What you're finding. Did you have a question on that? Oh, okay. um, what, what you might be starting to see is that with each increase in number, we're just increasing the number of CH2s. So um, propane has one CH2, butane has two CH2s. How many do you think pentane will have? Three. So you can see structures written like this, CH3, CH2, parentheses, and it's going to be 3 CH2. Don't do that. <laughs> if you don't like it, by all means, don't do it. But sometimes they, you might see a structure and you're like, what is that? What does that mean? But it's just the same thing. Well, right? you ever put anything like that on the test? Um, I don't, we don't usually do it, but um, I always let students know about it because it can throw you off if you come across and like, what is this? You know, but it's just the same five carbons, CH3, CH2, 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 CH3. All right, so hexane, six, Two, four, six, H two, H two, H two, H two, H two, H three. Seven. So I'm just gonna leave these carbons and I want you to practice filling in your hydrogen. In organic chemistry. You will find yourself talking to yourself a lot, and that's okay. Do it. <laughs> because 
counting, numbering, naming. I will see rings starting at three carbon. Okay. So fill those in.